apart from tea and coffee, that remain the major cash crops in Uganda on the international market over the years, coke exporters believe that coke also has the potential due to its increased demand internationally. Wilfred Alganyira, the Esco branch manager in Ibundibujo, one of the cocoa exporters, says Uganda's favorable soils and conducive environment has not been utilized fully. We see many people demanding for cocoa. Actually, the demand is limited compared to the demand is high compared to the supply. Alganyira adds that despite efforts by exporters to improve the sector, more needs to be done, including government will to improve the sector. There's a little done by the government uh, to assist us to to train the farmers because basically this is done by ESCO. We, 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 we train the farmers on how to maintain the cocoa uh, farm management, uh, fight diseases in the case we get them and uh, other things that the farmers require. The biggest buyers of cocoa in the Mundubuja district include ESCO Uganda Limited, Olam, Ugaden, Agrocorp Vanish and UCCL Blackham. Cocoa from Bundubujo is uh, the best cocoa on the world market because of the soils. And uh, we have it has attracted many buyers in, in, the, in Bundubujo, especially here we have about more than 10 companies buying the cocoa. Exporters buy already fermented cork from farmers, process it and then export it. So what we do, uh, of course there are those farmers who may not maintain to dry the cocoa up to seven days or four days because they want to get quick money. We also encourage them to bring the cocoa wet as it is because we have the facilities around where we can dry the cocoa and we have the machines where we can dry the cocoa further up to the required moisture. Coke is an international traded commodity and nearly all coke beans produced in Uganda are exported. However, they are worried of the deteriorating coke quality due to the competition between exporters of coke and poor methods used in fermenting and drying it. So because we, have, we are many, uh, there's a lot of competition and then farmers have not, uh, have, have retarded in uh, maintaining the quality. What is happening now, because people are rushing, uh, fighting for cocoa, farmers no longer ferment uh, seven days. Farmer will ferment three days and he sells the cocoa. But at the end of the day, it will, it will affect the market because when it reaches there, it, the, the quality keeps deteriorating because farmers no longer ferment and then maybe drying and they may be removing dirt. If you can look at this cocoa, you see that it has some dirt. So that's the challenge we see as number one. To save the situation, they have invested in drying materials and sensitizing farmers on better practices. So we imported the containers of tarpaulins and gave farmers at a, at a fair price. So I should say 95% um, of the farmers in Bundubujo have tarpaulins where they can dry the cocoa. And those who can afford the racks uh, have the racks. And we have also supported some, especially those with big gardens, and we have given them racks at their homes where they can dry the cocoa. As prices of coke keeps rising, this has threatened food production, as many farmers prefer coke from another crop, which can cause food shortage in the region. Because farmers have planted coke everywhere, they have, they have no land where they can plant food. So they, they are depending on the cocoa, money, money that comes from coke after selling, then they buy the food. But if they are having food production somewhere plus an export crop, then that would be a little bit okay for the incomes for the farmers. Uganda exports more than 10,000 metric tons of coke every year, and around 60% of coke exported is produced in Nimudubujo. Ivan Chimurchigozi, NTV on the farm.